Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, first uh, tutorial in the series which I'm calling Learner's Permit. Uh, today we shall be covering the basic user interface and do a mission and a little trade, which I suppose are the things that bewilder beginners the most. First of all, uh, we'll have a look at the in-ship user interface. Starting on the left, we got an information panel, and then we got the uh, currently targeted uh, uh, thing, vessel, whatever. Uh, in this case, uh, the station I'm sitting in. Uh, then we have the compass, which is very useful. Um, this shows where your target is in relation to you. If it's got a solid dot in it, it means the target is ahead of you, and with the hollow dot, the target is behind you. And then we got the menu uh, where the radar usually goes. Next up we have uh, the status of your ship, uh, the rings surrounding it, that's your shield status. Three rings is full shields, and under there again you have the hull status. Next up is the uh, power management, how you set up your power distribution. Systems are things like the sensors and also regenerating the shield. Engine, obviously, is engines. Thrusters. And weapons, well, wep are weapons. And that's how much power goes to your weapons. Uh, how you uh, Prioritize depends upon uh, what you're doing at the moment. Uh, now uh, it's set up for me uh, for my normal trading business, which is to say two pips on the shields and systems, and four pips on the engines for max speed. Uh, of course, this can be changed. Uh, by whatever keys you've assigned to managing uh, the power systems. This is the balanced option. For combat, I usually go with uh, more into systems and weapons. Actually, sometimes everything into systems and weapons. For normal trading, systems and engines is quite good enough. And next to that again, you got your fuel status. Uh, above the text that says fuel, you got a thin line. That's uh, your uh, internal fuel that we should use in uh, normal space and super cruise. Usually one ton. And the thick line underneath is uh, your main fuel tank. Uh, if the thin line goes to zero, it just takes a ton from the thick line and fills up automatically, so not a problem. Uh, above the fuel, if you want it, it'll say so there. Next up, uh, let's go to the left hand panel. This is where you navigate or select uh, navigation targets more correctly. Uh, here you can also choose to go directly to galaxy map or system map and here you set uh, your uh, navigation targets. Not, we'll get into that a little bit later. Transactions that shows your current missions and also um, your bounty claims. As you can see, I got quite a few bounties not uh, cashed in quite yet. we get back to that in a moment. Contacts, not terribly important for the time being. Um, when you do get into combat and stuff like that, it, it's, it's more relevant to go through those things. Same with sub-targets and cargo, which here are blacked out. Uh, let's see here, if you choose the clipper, I can go to 
stuff like this. And I can see what kind of uh, equipment he's got installed. And if I had the cargo scanner, I could also see what kind of cargo he's currently holding. And next, we'll go to the right hand panel. Now uh, this is the important one, uh, first it shows your current rankings um, in combat trade and explore. Uh, underneath there again you find your balance, that's your current uh, stash of cash, money you had to spend. And under there again is something very important, that's the rebuy cost, that's your insurance. That is how much you have to pay to get your ship back. Uh, with your current modules installed. You should always ensure that your balance is above the rebuy, rebuy cost. If it's below, uh, you probably can't afford to buy back your ship in your current configuration. And if worst comes to worst, you lose everything and you start back with your starter sidewinder and a thousand credits. So always have enough to cover the rebuy cost and if I were you I'd also <laughs> have double that plus a little bit extra to buy a load of cargo. Next up we got the reputation. The three top ones are the major factions, Federation, Empire and Alliance. Uh, beneath that again you can see the system factions. Uh, this is quite important when you're trying to build reputation with a major faction because then you only want to do missions for the minor factions that are allied to the major faction you're trying to cozy up with and gain rank with. Uh, in this system, as you can see, the minor factions uh, allied to the major faction I'm trying to rank up in, which is the Empire, are uh, the Patriots of Law, Pharaoh, United, Incorporated, and Guardians of Tradition. Moving through this uh, menu a little bit more, you can see how much uh, influence each minor faction have in this system. Patriots of Law, obviously, are the largest one. And then we got Pharaoh. Zero actually. Labor of Habu, Society of Habu, oh. Guardians of Tradition. Uh, all of these are on the rise for some reason. Next up is the finance uh, screen, which is basically just a fleshed out uh, overview of what you got on the left side there balance, rebuy, stuff like that. Then you got your statistics, show how much uh, you made so far in the various roles. Uh, this overview is a bit bugged at the moment. Um, for instance, here you can see credit spent on ships zero. Obviously, I've spent more than that. Assassinations zero. Obviously, again, I've done a few of those. value. I've had more than zero credits on my head. Um, although I've paid it off since then. Yeah, and trading mining. Oh, not done any mining. That's true enough. And also, I've visited the insurance screen six times and spent almost 4.3 million buying my ships back. Only once uh, by player, once by a bug, and four times due to my own stupidity and beer. Permits, that's uh, permits to otherwise closed off systems. All of these I've gotten by getting cozy with the Federation and with the Empire. Uh, 
Uh, next up we go to modules. Um, here you can close off and start modules to save power or whatnot. Uh, the important thing here is uh, down in the bottom you can see output and use it. Output is uh, of course the uh, total power you have uh, available. Usage is your maximum power usage if everything was powered up. Luckily though you can set priorities so that when your weapons are out uh, you can shut down or rather when your hard points are out and deployed you can shut down a few systems to save power. Uh, the thing to look for here then is that uh, you get a number two uh, digit way down in the bottom there. That's the second uh, priority two. And then also you get priority three. Um, if you can see the number two down there, then you're safe with the uh, weapons deployed. If you can't, then you're not. For instance, if I turn off that one, this is not safe. So if I now uh, deploy my hardpoints, everything will shut down and I'm pretty much dead in the water. Uh, the systems safe to shut off are the ones not used in normal space or when uh, your hardpoints are deployed. That would include stuff like the cargo hatch, perhaps. Uh, definitely the frame shift drive. Frame shift drive interdictor, if you got that installed. And the fuel scoop. All those are of absolutely no use when you're in normal space and your weapons are deployed. So might as well put them on a low priority. Next up we got fire groups. Uh, here in my ASP I've set up three fire groups. The first one is the scanners. I got the kill one scanner and the frame shift quick scanner and interdictor. On the first one here, no weapons. Uh, this uh, fire group uh, also functions for me as a weapons safe uh, fire group so that I won't accidentally fire on something friendly, for instance. Next up, I got the second fire group, which uh, run the beam lasers and multi cannons. And I got a third one to also run the missile racks. Uh, these are heat-seeking missiles, and they're quite expensive, so I keep them on a separate fire group, uh, as I don't tend to use them much due to their cost, uh, but if I do need to use them because somebody is trying to run away from me or it's a very big target that requires all my firepower, then I'll go to fire group 3 and well, use them once the shields are down. Missiles are useless against shields, so first you need to strip the shields. Uh, changing fire group assignments is pretty easy. You just select which fire group and weapon and then just select which fire button, if any, should be assigned to it. Cargo, not holding any cargo at the moment, but on this screen uh, you can see what you're carrying, of course. You can also see if it's stolen or if it's uh, part of a mission haulage. And this is also where you can uh, abandon your cargo, say if you want to give some cargo to a friend, or if it's some pirate that demands cargo from you, this is where you can jettison some cargo and then it will be marked as stone. You don't want to make it too easy for the pirates, so for pirates, jettison, for friends, abandon. Functions, uh, a few things here. Um, yeah, self-destruct obviously, if you've been left dead in the water with no engines or whatever, this is where you <laughs> self-destruct. Sensor scale type, either logarithmic or linear, gunsight mode, interface brightness, pretty self-explanatory. 
a bit lines. I prefer to have him on, uh, and I'll get into why a little bit later. Report crimes against me. Uh, here it depends upon situation whether you want to keep it on or off. If you got cargo in a system that is either illegal or you got cargo that is stolen, then you don't want to get um, too much attention to you. So if you're in a fight with some pirate or bounty hunter or whatever, leave that off with that kind of cargo. Uh, if you're pretty much legitimate, you are doing nothing illegal, don't intend to do anything illegal, and leave it on. Pre-fly checks off, naturally. Uh, turret weapon mode, that's only applicable if you got turret weapons. And on top here you got fashion. That's uh, for when you enter a combat zone. You go into functions here, and then you select which faction you want to fight for. Uh, in here. Actually cover all the in cockpit menus. So time to look at the starport services. Uh, this obviously reload, repair, refuel, news. Nothing too exciting, should be pretty self-explanatory. Munitions. Here you can load up your ammunition individually per weapon. Say you don't uh, have enough money to stock up on your missiles. You can go in and stock up on multi cannons and stuff like that and leave the missiles alone. This is also the screen where you can buy limpets uh, if you got the cargo hatch limpet controller if you're pirating. Uh, next up is repairs. Here again you can repair each module individually if you can't afford to take them all in one big go. And this is also where you fix your ship integrity. Uh, this will degrade uh, as you fly around. If you get pulled out of hyperspace or rather super cruise, that will do quite a bit of damage to integrity. If you go too close to, pa to planets or suns and get pulled out of super cruise, this will hurt your integrity more as well. Same if you crash into stuff and stuff like that, so be careful. Yeah. It can get expensive with the big ships. Uh, I'm flying an off pair, and as you can see, each percent is about 11,000 <laughs> credits. Um, bulletin board, we get back to that. Contacts, and uh, this is where you pay off your bounties. If I had a bounty on my head, this is where I'd pay it off. Local security office. It's more or less the same thing, only for fines in the local system, and also redeeming bounty vouchers, either for the local system or faction, or any other major factions, depending on what system you're in. So I might as well cash in that little bounty voucher. Combat bonds, that's if you've been in a combat zone and fought for a uh, given faction, then you can cash them in here. If this station had a black market, that would come up right underneath here. Uh, black market is where you sell either stolen, good, uh, stolen goods or illegal goods, obviously. Uh, outfitting, we'll do that in another episode. Shipyard. This is where you buy and sell and store ships. Um, what ships are available varies with each uh, station. Uh, very large high-tech stations uh, tend to have more ships than uh, smaller population, uh, industrial or agriculture or whatever. So if you want a good selection of ships, go find yourself a 
very rich, highly populated, high-tech system. Uh, this is also where you can change the ships. Uh, if you got one stored at the, the given station. And also where you can find out where uh, if you have ships stored at other systems, where they are at the moment. Uh, just give an example of how it works. Let's uh, buy a little hauler. There we go. 52,000. Buy that. I'm not gonna sell my current ship. Uh, my little asp. Never selling it. Uh, oh, that's one thing. Uh, either way, if you are going to sell a new uh, sell a ship for whatever reason, first strip off all the modules you bought for it and put in the default modules, the really cheap ones, because then you get full refund for your uh, upgraded modules, and the only loss uh, is. Uh, 10% you take from selling off a stock ship. So, I'm gonna buy a new ship and store my current ship. Like so. Holler, the white van of the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. Still without a cup holder. Anywho, uh, we're not gonna be using uh, that ship in this episode, but we'll get back to it in the next episode, which will cover outfitting and exploration. But there we are, I got a stored ship, my ass. And now I want it back. Here we can either sell my stored ship or retrieve it and store the current ship. Not a little waiting time. Shipyard, uh, commodities, that's where you buy and sell stuff, and got the graphics. If you got any exploration data, this is where you sell it. And we'll get back to that in the next episode. Uh, but for now, we are going to do a mission and a trade. So, first off, go to the bulletin boards. Um, I got quite a few missions available here. Uh, since I'm trying to wrap up with the Empire, uh, it's important to look at the minor faction giving the mission. As you may remember, over here in uh, Status, the minor factions allied with the Empire is the Patrons of Law, Pro United, and Guardians of Tradition. And those are the ones I would want to do missions with. Uh, not enough credits in that. Galite? Well, yeah, maybe. This one, that's uh, retrieving some kind of goods floating about. And then smuggle it in to this station. Which is not a good idea in a big heavy asp. Maybe in a smaller ship. Uh, but it's kind of risky, because if it gets scanned, uh, trying to get in to the big station, uh, you're going to get a fine, and your reputation will tank down pretty severely. So if you're going to do missions with this kind of icon, to get some kind of um, good that you need to smuggle in, activity considered illegal, and try to do so from an outpost, not a station. Uh, with a big uh, bullseye thing here, that's an assassination mission. 
not much profit. One faction, one faction. Uh, this is a charity mission. They want me to go get some food, and for doing that, I get the reputation, which is good if you want to wrap up. Um, long distance service agents. Coffee for fourteen thousand. Uh, that sounds interesting. We'll do that one. Hork. Ah, uh, I'll be right back. Alright, and we are back. I think my internet service provider have been doing some maintenance of one sort or another because of the hour that went by here now I've had a couple of disconnects which broke up the recording too much so here I am uh, back at the uh, Gottlob Frege Coliseum station in the uh, bulletin board screen and we'll try to do a mission once more. Uh, as you can see we've got two good ones here to make quite a bit of credits. One combat thingy but for the wrong faction, Society of Abaul, this um, let's see here. They are very much independent and won't do much good when it comes to me gaining reputation with the Empire. However, my little patrons of law are good. Let's see here. Mineral oil. That would require me going to an agricultural station or system. Pretty short timeline, 48 minutes. Let's take a look at the other one. Semiconductors. Hmm. Uh, that sounds reasonable. Let's do that one. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna bounty hunt. Uh, what you see down here, yeah, it's a bug in the game, really. Imperial summons, go to summer lamb, pick up whatever. I already got the permit. As you can see here, doo -doo -doo, there it is, Summer Lama System Permit. So, it's some kind of bug they haven't fixed yet. Either way, where were we? We are going to find semiconductors. Now, where can we find those? One quick way to find out is to go into the map. And you. Trade routes and then hook off for what is that again? Engineered ceramics, isn't it? <coughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry. Into this uh, semiconductors and just to remove a little bit of clutter, we're gonna go into economical routes. There we go. And just for the lols, take out the top. There we go. Uh, semiconductors. There we go. S. Eridani. And. Hip 14857. Which is the bigger? Wood? No description? No description there either. Do I need to purchase exploration data to get to it? And here I don't. 10, 10, 23. 
think we go there. And plot the root. And do that. In that mode. And take a look at the system. Huh. No station visible. Unexplored even. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, as you can see, there's a big line without any planets here, so there's plenty of stuff to discover. Here we go. These boys got refinery and extraction going on. I should have some semiconductors for me to buy. Uh, being a refinery and extraction system, they should love some advanced catalyzers and resonating separators. So let's see if we can't buy any. actually. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, nah. Let's see here. Mineral, uh, microbial furnaces. And by cheap, I mean 500 below galactic average. Uh, that's one thing I tend to do. I have a spreadsheet where I plot in uh, the commodities that sell for 500 above galactic average, or you can buy them for about 500 below galactic average. And I also jot down uh, difficult to get uh, items such as personal weapons, battle weapons, uh, combat stabilizers, uh, narcotics, slaves, you know, the common goods that are still a bit hard to get at, at places. Let's take a little look here what's in high demand for the return trip. Probably gonna go back with um, a bit of beryllium, possibly gold, depends on the prices uh, over at my destination. Anywho, time to go. The course is plotted already. So it's just a matter of getting there. Just give the 
little boost to get out of the mass lock area. Three kilometers from the station. Here we go. Frameshift drive charging. Small and medium. Fuel safe disengaged. Ah. Almost 3,000 light seconds away. Uh, this is gonna take a while. And here we are coming in towards the uh, big mines. Since this is an outpost, it doesn't matter from which direction you approach um, the outpost. Unlike stations, they don't have uh, any particular direction where you can uh, land. There's no slot to line up to. Keeping the speed of between 7 and 10 seconds you know, until I get there. Engines disengaged. Now then, see what prices we can fetch. Uh, but before doing that, see if any of our cargo is wanted by anyone in here. Broken bits. There we are. My PC was nagging me about updates. Uh, data hunter, no. Data hunter, no. Food needed, no. So, sell what I have. That was pretty low. Ah, uh, hardly any profit at all. Oh well, a little is better than none, I suppose. And even the catalyzers are pretty low. Hmm. Oh well. No then. 
what did we have to get? Eight semiconductors. Could be cheaper. Could be cheaper. I think I'll go for a mix of beryllium and gold and superconductors. Take 30 of those. No interesting missions to grab up here, so I'm just gonna head back. And there's where I started from, Fagol. As you can see now, uh, by the system, there are two icons. Uh, there is the globe which signifies uh, that's a place to finish a mission or perform a mission and then there's the wireframe cobra icon which signifies that i got the ship stored at that location anywho off we go <sighs> lights off <laughs> Ship released. Engines engaged. Landing gear retracted. And by the power of video editing, pretty soon. We shall be on the final approach to Fabao. Coming up towards Gotlop uh, Frege. What the name? We've got to Google that to find out who it is. Look at this. Excellent, excellent. I'm not going to try and fight it. Back on safe and retract the hard points. 
Frameshift drive charging. trick to a good uh, approach on a big station is to go in between the planet that the station is orbiting and the station itself. So lining up here, controlling the speed, trying to keep it between 7 and 10 seconds until uh, arrival. Also use the gravity well of the planet to break the speed a little bit more in case you're coming in a bit too hot. There you go, all lined up, and now the orbit uh, ring should form a nice little line, meaning there you go, good approach. We're at it. Do deploy the gears, landing gears, uh, whilst you are outside the station. That will slow you down a bit, and it will also reduce your speed if you accidentally hit the boost bump, which uh, may prevent you smacking into the station and ending up as uh, wreckage. Does mean it takes a bit longer to get out there into the station actually. There we go, how do we configure the power to my normal setup for non combat? and clean with palm trees and everything. And the clutter that most stations consist of. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. Alrighty. Now that first all the business. Reload. Collect a little bounty. Then finish the mission. Give cargo. Woohoo. And then oh look at that. I did buy some gold in a heart. Let's take a look at how much I got. Uh Berylian so we got that's gold, twenty-one actually. So patrons of law. Those are Empire. Yep. All good. So we just accept that. And get cargo. Ha. Easy money. Food, no. Clothing, no. Weapons. I doubt I got any weapons. We acted on that. They sell that here, don't they? Don't they? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Uh, indeed, I do. So hurry out of here. 
go back to the building board and oh fuck it's gone it's gone oh well oh so the rest of my little hole here see if we can like this good price William, pretty good price for that as well. Hey, look at that, over a thousand profit. And finally, the remaining gold. And there we go. Uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, I will provide a link uh, to a graphic I have uh, showing what kind of uh, system industries provide what kind of goods and which uh, system industries uh, demand uh, the same goods I'll provide a link to that in the video descriptions and next time next episode we shall be looking at uh, outfitting and how to do exploration which will be interesting anywho see you next time and fly safe <laughs>